I have a deja vu. I think I've been here, I think. How's everybody going? Yeah? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And also, the camera is there, right? Do we have any boulders? Because... All right. You know, uh, back in London, uh, because of COVID, we have stripes so that people know distance. But when I came in the church, the first time, the pastor said, all right, you see the yellow stripes? Don't get over them. Otherwise, the camera will not take you. So, and for those that were here before, know that I move a bit. So, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am Joe, or Joelle. This is my Italian name. Uh, I'm from Rome, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm very honored, actually, to, to be here and be speaking on behalf of Wycliffe. Uh, so, just to get started, I have a few slides. Yes, bear with me. You're doing great, brother. So, the Bible. I think that more or less on the phone or like on paper, everybody has a Bible, right? And it is great to see the work that the Bible has done, the work that God has done through the Bible. So if you think about it, in 1440, the first book ever printed when the printer was, was born, when the uh, printing was invented, was the Bible. That was the first book ever. We have the, this is our first, this is our precious pride to be Christians. So the first book was the Bible. And then, you know, in 1517, we have Martin Luther, right? He was a great man of God, and he started to translate the Bible in German. And because of the press and because of the Bible in German, people could read the Bible in their own languages. And, and the Bible started to spread. And that is great, right? We have this great tool, we have this great blessing in our hands. But, can we go to the next slide, please? Now, I am sure that in, in the moments of distress of our life, one of the first things ever to do is to go towards God, right? And the first thing to do is to grab your Bible. Maybe kneeling down, reading a Psalm, Psalm 23, or maybe having the Gospel of John, the Epistles. Now, think for a second, your life without this. Without your Bible. Without anything to read. Now, I know that in English there are hundreds of translations. In Italian we have a few. So it's really hard to really understand it. So, I'm going to say a phrase, and you're going to repeat it after me, okay? I changed it, by the way. Are you ready? Yes. Est. Amor. Deus. Est amor Deus. Okay, say it to each other. Est amor Deus. Est amor Deus. Oh, that is great. All right, so this is Latin, and this means God is love. Oh, it's great, isn't it? You know it with your mind, but does it say anything to you? You can say it, you can encourage each other, est amor Deus. You can say other thing. You can say it in Latin, in Greek, in Hebrew, but it doesn't grab you. It doesn't grasp you because there is something missing. Because when we speak in our language, when we speak, when I speak in Italian, it's something different for me. When I speak to my mother and we speak a South dialect Italian, oh, it's different. So think about that. Think about reading and speaking in your own language and think about all the people that cannot. In fact, if we can see the next slide, this is what actually changed our life. The Word of God. And we, we, we read in Genesis how with the Word God created everything. Then we read in John that the Word became flesh. But out of five people, I can say that one person can read the Bible. The 20% of the population in the world that is made of 8 billion people, 1.5 billion people cannot read the Bible. Either they don't have the Old Testament or the New Testament, or maybe they don't even have John 3.16. They don't have anything, nothing to read, nothing to encourage each other with the Bible. And this is a problem, isn't it? 
Because I can tell you so many stories, so many preaching, so many sermons of men, women of God, that with the Bible, with this tool, with this sword, they were conquering people, conquering hearts. And God was moving. Holy Spirit was moving among people and cultures and nations. So this is why, as you can see, one of the five. It's like this part of the church. You have your Bibles, you can read it, you, you bless each other, and then there's a bunch of people here that cannot. And you try to share with them. You, you try to say it in English, in Spanish, in Italian, and they don't get it. It's like, okay, yeah, I know that God is love, yeah, but it doesn't grasp me, it doesn't take me. My heart is not full of it because I can't understand it. Jesus was not speaking in Latin, not even in Hebrew. He was speaking Aramaic. It was the language that the people there were speaking. He was not speaking as the Pharisees in the synagogue, in Hebrew. No, Jesus understood that the first step ever to get the people was getting at their level. That is language, that is culture. Jesus was born as a Jew, right? So, next one, please. That's great. I'm going to show you a very, very short video. It's one minute video. We're going to see it together. I'm coming back here. Go for it. So this is it. So many people without a Bible, without the life that we receive from God. Now there are a few verses I would like to share that we may know by heart. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus was saying, I am the bread of life, right? And this is bread. We eat it. We are spiritually full of it when we, when we have it in our houses, on our bedside table, and we read it in the morning and the evening. And we, and we get nourishment, right? Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. Next one, please. The word of God is alive and active. It's written in Hebrew. And then... He opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Because this is another important point, I think. Uh, and it is one of the work that we do as uh, Wycliffe. We don't just give a Bible in, in, in the community language, but we try to train and teach people how to actually then teach the Bible. Because I, I can tell you, I can go and maybe learning the language, and that's what our missionaries do. They learn the language. They stay in the community among the people. But they cannot share the same thing. It's not the same. I've tried to study English. I've tried to express myself. But it will always be a bit different. There will always be a mistake or something like slipping in the language. And it's all right because this is what is learning another language, right? But in order for them, for the people of every community that still do not have teachings, we need people that are raising from them. People of the same families, from the same villages, the same cities. Amen? That's great. So this is what we do. And here we go. John Wycliffe. So this guy uh, translated 600 years ago the Bible in English. Now, as you know, uh, the Bible was read and written in Latin, translated in Latin for centuries. And if you think about that, in Italy, 70 years ago, Mass was still spoken in Latin. So people were just repeating the thing that you repeated before with me. And that doesn't make sense for people. Because again, you may know it. You may know what it says, but you don't know what it means. That's why, as Wycliffe, we try to, to translate to empower, to train, uh, especially this church is supporting the web people in Cameroon. Yeah? So just a bit of uh, news about how it's going on, or what, is, what is happening in Cameroon. So um, there are more or less between 13 and 14,000 people that speak this language that are part of this people group. And we have started to, to translate the Bible in more or less 2007, to translate the New Testament. This is how we do it. We start with the New Testament, all right, with Jesus' teachings, with parables, so that people may visualize what the Bible says. And then 
step by step, we try to translate the whole New Testament and then the Old Testament. That's how we do it. So, thank God, we did translate the New Testament, all right? Now we need to empower people with the Bible. We need to teach. So, that's why we need to pray about this. First of all, pray for Cameroon and for the web people. You know, uh, small people group like this, they are more likely to receive harassment from, from the government. From there, There's a war going on between rebels and government. And, and the smaller the group, the easier it is to take advantage. So there are people that are forced to, to flee, to go away from their houses. And we see now, we, we almost touch it with our hands, how war is, how terrible it is. We see in Ukraine, we need to pray for that. But sometimes we don't see outside our neighborhood, right? And there are people that are suffering today, still today. And it's been years, sometimes hundreds of years. We need to pray. So this is what I, uh, what I want to pray about. I want to pray about Cameroon. I want to pray about giving to the where people, not just the New Testament, but also to teach them and empower them so that pastors may raise, so that evangelists may raise, prophets, apostles. And I heard that this church has a great evangelist heart. And God bless you for that. Keep going. Keep doing that because God needs and wants this. God wants us to go. Amen? We're not meant to be static. We're not meant to be sitting on our chairs, not moving, and just receiving. That's nothing. Once you receive, you give it. Once you take it, you give it. Amen? So we're going to pray for also the family of Parkham Christopher. He, is the, he was the translator for the where community. He unfortunately passed away. So we're going to pray also for his family. We're going to pray that the work in translation will keep going despite this, this loss for this community. So why don't, we, don't you pray with me? All right, I will pray for, for this. So Father Lord, we want to pray for Cameroon. We want to pray for the web people community. And we are sure that everybody in front of you have the same value. And I am sure that you are calling us to be a blessing for the nations. That's what you called us, and that's what we're meant to be. So I want to pray also for uh, Christopher's family. So you know that it's, it's always hard to, to lose part of, of your family. So we want to pray for that. I want to pray that the translation may keep going, that you may empower other people, that you may touch other people out, so they may keep translating the Bible. And we want to pray for the way that the New Testament will be delivered to the where people, so that they may finally receive your word, they finally, they finally receive hope, faith, and love. We want to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah, this is how we, we try to work. And Now, we, Wycliffe is a, sometimes I say Wycliffe, sometimes Wycliffe, you name it, um, is an international organization, actually. So, there's Wycliffe UK that counts more or less 300 missionaries all around the globe. And then there's uh, Wycliffe Switzerland. Wycliffe Italy is tiny, but we're, we're trying to work also in our small space. So this is what it's all about. This is about transformation, right? There's a beautiful verse that I'm going to read. It's in, in Corinthians. Therefore, we know it by heart. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And that's what the Bible is for us. This is transformation. It's not just changing. You know, sometimes we think that God is, came here to change us, to, to, to take me as Joel and say, no, you know what? No, I don't like how I made it. I'm like, you created me like this. No, God takes who you are, takes away sin. That's the thing that makes us dirty. And then he fills us with love. He makes us clean. Amen? So, what's our role in this? What's the, the part we need to play? What, what do we need to do? Okay, Joe, you, you told us. That's great news. Wycliffe is doing a lot of things. Great. God bless you guys. Now, I want to read with you in Romans chapter 10. 
I'm gonna say it again, but I love this book. Sorry, Stu. I will say it every time. You know what? Romans 8 is my favorite chapter in the Bible. But let's go to Romans chapter 10 from verse 5. You got it? Also, you that are following us online, grab your Bible and follow us reading. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does he say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. And we know this verse by heart now. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses. And he's saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all. Bestowing his riches on all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a great message of hope. That kind of <laughs> How then do they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him for whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? a big problem here. We have the blessing. We have the promises of God that are yes and amen and we sing it in the church and we are full of these blessings filled up. And then 1.5 billion people. It's not that they don't know. You know, because sometimes we, we're talking about Bible poverty and Bible illiteracy if we walk here in the UK or in Italy or in Europe or in in other countries and you ask who God is, who Jesus is, they're going to say, oh yeah, Jesus is God. So no, no, no. These people don't even know who Jesus is. They don't even know who the God of the Bible is. It's not about knowing the miracles of the 5,000. That is the only miracle in the four Gospels. It's not about finding all the Hebrew roots or the Greek ways of expressing love. No, it's about knowing who Jesus is. And this is what we need to do. This is my role. Now, the Apostle Paul was talking about faith that is, in a way, in opposition with with the law, but then Jesus comes and completes it, right? So what about, what, what is Jesus making the law accomplish? What does it mean? I mean, was it, does it mean that Yahweh, when he wrote it down, the Old Testament was like, not finished yet? No, it was not perfect. I need Jesus to make it perfect. No, Jesus said, I'm coming here to let you understand that that law now needs to be fulfilled. How? With your heart. Because the people were doing a lot. They were, they were giving the tithe. They were helping the poor. They were doing a lot of, they were praying out loud and they were saying nice and beautiful prayers. And Jesus was saying, what about your heart? What are you doing? It's not of how many words you say. It's about how you are inside. So, when Jesus said, I'm going to give a completion, this work is going to be finished. And that's why he said, he cried out on that cross. It is finished. It's complete. 
Nothing more to be done. From God's side. Because God did everything He could. But what about us? What about me? What about you? And the Apostle Paul was writing to the Romans and was saying, we need people to believe, right? And believing in Jesus is life. Believing in Jesus is hope. But we need them to hear. And that's why we try to translate as much as possible in all the languages that we know. So people may hear. People may read together. They gather. When we have a Bible study here, when we, when we preach, when we read together, we get a blessing that is indescribable. We try sometimes to say to people, who is God for you? Who is Jesus for you? But it's, it, I cannot describe what it is for me. My heart is so full of joy that despite everything, I feel God's love in my life. So this is how we're trying to let people hear. But we need people to preach. And that's why, again, Wycliffe is trying to train people so that from the same very community, people may rise and feel pushed by the Holy Spirit in preaching and teaching the gospel. And this is great. And then Paul says something. He said, how are you going to preach if we don't send anybody? How are we going to do our job if we don't go? And this is the point I want to stress about this morning. This is not the introduction, by the way. <laughs> no worries. In Italy, we, we preach one hour and a half. No, no, this is the, the whole point of the preaching. And in five minutes, the, the worship team will come again on stage. And we're going to respond to this. And I was sitting after, after the first service. I was like, I, w- I, was, I was feeling to, to read this. Again, I don't know if it, it was just me wanting to encourage you. But sometimes I hear people say, how can I go? Uh, how can I be a missionary? Or how can I just leave everything and go? Baby, because you are, you're a single girl, you're a single woman, and you're like, I mean, I, I need a husband otherwise. How can I go there and, and, and preach in the gospel? I'm alone. Or maybe you are in a couple, and you're like, but we, we can't leave everything, our jobs. Or maybe you are a family, and you have children, and you're like, God, are you asking me to leave everything with my children, to leave stability? And then I, I was thinking about this, and I was Go remind me of this, this verse in Matthew. You remember when Herod kills all the baby, right? All the babies in, in Bethlehem. And then it is written, the God says to Joseph to take the child, take Mary, and go away to Egypt. It's not the Egypt of today that you go like a, a tourist. No, no, at the time, the Romans were there. So it was a, an oppressed people again, with rebellious, with internal wars. And God says, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. And the last part of this, of this section of the Bible says like this, This, Jesus going away, was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Because God already spoke to you. God already told you what to do in order for you to fulfill the prophecy that he gave you. In order for him to fulfill the word that you received. And I know that it's hard. And I tell you my personal experience. I come from Rome. My girlfriend is in Sicily right now. She's there. She made me watch him, you know. My family is in Rome. All my friends are in Rome. And I left everything and I came here. I'm not here telling you what to do. It's that, that is easy, right? And I'm sure that Stu has his battles. And sometimes we cannot even say what we've been through. But we try to stay and, and preach and bless you. But I tell you, it's hard. Serving God, God never, oh, Jesus never said it's going to be nice, it's going to be easy. Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trials, but do not worry. I want it all. So if you are a single woman, 
I can tell you so many stories of so many missionaries. Like Elizabeth Heather. Do you know her? Oh, she lost her husband. She stayed in that tribe and people went to God. They accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior because of the work of a single mother. They are always saying, no, no. We need to go. We need to empower women. Go for it. Now is your time. We need to say it, but we need to do it. Doesn't matter if you are a man, if you're a woman. Go for it. And if you are a couple and you're like, no, I, I can't live my stability. Jesus left the throne in heaven to become a human being. More stable than that, I don't know what it could be. And he became human for us. So how more we can go and serve God. And if you're a family and you're like, I, I have a kid. She's like, Three. Then I have a young son. He's seven. First of all, you're not going to be alone. I want to tell you, I was scared of that as well. But Wycliffe also provides help for single people, for couples, for families. But then, think about Joseph and Mary taking the child and going away. We preach and we say that Jesus is with us. If God is with us, let's do it. Let's not just say it. It is true if you confess with your mouth, but you have to believe in your heart. We need to believe. We need to do it. We need to take action. And I tell you, you don't see it now. You may not see it in five years. But at the end, that's our hope, right? Is it, is it our hope that Jesus will come here, maybe will come personally for us, and we will go to heaven and we will see him? Is that our hope? So let's live like that. Let's live that we are going to work for God. So if you have a gift of generosity, if you always feel to, to be given, go for it. Gift, because we also need that. It's always hard to speak about money, but here I am. <laughs> For it. If you feel called to give, God bless you. If you feel called to pray, oh, we need intercession. We need people that fight and then break the microphones. It's not broken, brother. We need people that fight that they may be woken up by God in the middle of the night, walking. I know that you do it. I know that you wake up and you walk in your house and you pray and you bless the people because God is putting somebody in your heart. We need that. We need fighters. But we also need people that move the Holy Spirit may go. And I tell you, Jonah didn't want to go. Jonah didn't want to go. Didn't want to serve God. What did he do eventually? And the city that he needed to go was a, was a city full of people that were full of hatred and nasty people. I, I don't want to tell you what they used to do. If you want to have a chat with me, I will tell you all the tortures that the Ninevites were doing to captives and prisoners. So Jonah was right. I was like, Lord, I don't want to go there because I'm going to die. You're not alone. God is with you. People of God are with you. You'll never be alone. You may feel alone. Sometimes it's hard. But God is calling you. So you need to respond. So I will ask Stu and the worship team to lead us in worship. Uh, why don't we respond to it? Why don't we start praying? And you close your eyes. And if you feel like God is actually calling you, is, if he's pushing you, don't resist. Don't resist. Go for it. Don't be like Jonah. Be like Joseph. He believed. He took his wife. He took his child. And he went to Egypt. And God blessed him. Amen. God bless the church. God bless you.